Okay. On your right, you'll see an, a little tiny word that says advanced next to the people drop-down search box. Yep. Right. So let's click that word advanced together because once you do this, you wonder why you haven't done it weekly all along. <laughs> and I, what I didn't even know it was there or what it was for. I know, right? But what this does is it gives you the ability to search all around LinkedIn for the right people under the right circumstance. So we can plug in, as you can see, keywords, first name, last name, but the big one is location. So I'm going to use me as an example. So one of the things I do is I teach social media strategy, right? I'm not a social expert, I'm a social strategist, there's a difference. And I teach strategy all over the country. So let's say I'm going to Denver the end of this week, which I am. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for CEOs in the Denver area who might like to work with me. So the first thing I have to do is go out to the internet and get Denver's zip code. And then I'm going to plug that in. So, oh, there's so many, for heaven's sake. 80212. So let's plug that in together. In postal code, put in 80212. And then in title, I would put CMO for Chief Marketing Officer. And I could just hit search at that point. But I also could scroll down to the groups that I'm in and I could choose a venture capital because that is a great space to teach social marketing. And I'm going to click search. And I get three results. Now that's a really specific thing I look for, right? I look for chief marketing officer in Denver who belonged to the venture capital group. But that would be the right list under the right circumstance, and I could reach out to those three very specific people. Let's hit the back button. Let's do another one not so specific. Yeah. I just did it now, without the uh, venture capital group, and my friend Sonia Simone popped up. There you go. That's one right. Of the top, top bloggers in the country and who founded Copy Blogger. So you could choose all LinkedIn members, or you could choose a specific group, and groups will help you get the specifically right person. So if you just type in You have to be members. Can you select only groups you're in or any group? that's listed in LinkedIn? Only groups you're in, because there's thousands and thousands of groups. So the way that will populate to the bottom left is groups you're in. So you always, every first of the month for every client, I do a group analysis, and I make sure they're in the right groups. Now in Steve's case, it would be the Boston groups. And we know Boston zip code. I lied, I don't. What is it? 02140. 02140. So I'm going to choose, choose um, I'm going to choose CEO in Boston, but I'm going to choose executive suite members. And then we hit search, and that will bring us a shorter list. And what you'll and find is executive suite members in the title section. No, it's one of the groups. Believe it or not. There literally is a group called executive suite members. That's, yes. that's right, executive suite. Yes. Okay. Or we could choose some of the Boston groups, sales leadership. The, these are the groups Steve belongs to. Yours would be different. But by choosing one of the groups, you limit the search. And believe me, that's what you want. You'll get search results of thousands and thousands. You really want a few hundred you could work with. Yeah, so here's 668 just within 50 miles of that zip code. That's right. And then what we want to choose is instead of relevance, we want to choose relationship. So that will sort the order they come up with. And your first level connections, those, that means your friends on LinkedIn, the first level connections will come up first then. And we can look at this and say, does Steve want to send a message to Ken Estridge? Does he want to send one to Lucinda Duran, Steve Trippin? So these are probably good people for him to message in regard to his upcoming event. They're members of Executive Suite, so they've self-populated. They've decided they belong in that narrow vertical. They're within Boston zip code, and they're first-level connections of Steve. So the likelihood is that he has some passing knowledge of them at least. Okay. Now, if I were to go to the very last page, I would probably start getting to people who are not first-level connections. So now we're looking at second-level connections. And we could, sorry, hold on a second. We could send a message. 
or we could ask to get introduced. So if you'll go to the last page where you have results, let's get a second level connection so I can show you how to get introduced. And tell me when you see second level connections in that search window of results. Um, yeah, I do. OK. To the far right of the blue box that says connect, just hover over the little drop down there, and you'll see get introduced. And when you click that, LinkedIn will populate a little puzzle. And it'll show you you. It'll show you the person you want to get introduced to. And then you'll have three parties who could introduce you. Uh -huh. so if Steve wanted to be introduced to Robert Brooks of Vanguard Health Systems, LinkedIn gives him three options. It gives him Richard Kropp, Kristen Darby, and Pam Watkins. And I think we would probably choose Pam Watkins. It'll put her name in the puzzle, and it'll give you almost an email box. And you can say, you know, hey, Pam, I'd love to, uh, you know, let's see. We've got Steve and how do, you, how do you decide if you've got two, three, or four, or five, who is the best person to introduce? That's always a gut instinct, right? It's the, usually the person you know the best. And that was a good okay. choice because Pam I know, and the other ones I really don't know. I knew you knew her, right? She's awesome. And then I put personal note from Steve Lashansky, invitation to select event in Boston. And then I would fill this in with a little note, like, hey, Pam, I'm hosting a uh, an intimate, exclusive training event in Boston. I want to send, don't worry, in June. And I'd love to invite Robert Brooks. I think this would have great value for him. Would you pass on this introduction? And when you hit send request, it sends this request over to Pam, and Pam forwards it to Robert. But the upside is it almost comes through like a recommendation. It also allows Steve to invite both parties to his event. So he can say, by the way, I really would love you to come to this, Pam. Here, here are the details. So it's almost like a twofer. Both are getting to see that note. She when she gets it, and he when she passes it on to him. And how do you add, if there are details, how do you add those? I cut and paste them right into the note, or I send them to a link where the details live online. OK. But what about a document? Could you pass a bigger document through a PDF or a Word doc? Um, you can point them. You, so you can upload a PDF or a Word doc online. You can host it on spaces like you do, or your website, or even as a blog content. But you can't attach here. So Facebook, you can make an attachment now through the inbox, but not LinkedIn. Are they going to be changing that soon? I wouldn't be surprised. They do try and mirror a lot of developments on other platforms, but you know they have a problem with their hosting. If you break through the 30,000 mark on connections, they can't even load them all anymore. So they've got to do huge upgrades to their system in order to host documents. The other thing okay. is that when you start sending documents, you've got a whole lot more issues with firewalls. Right. Well, right. Not just so. So what I would pr rather do is I would rather send them to a page where there's a buy now button. You know, I'd rather give a one paragraph overview in this kind of a note, and then where they land right at the top is a you know reserve my spot. Okay. And this window where you do these you know, little uh, recommendations, these connections, these introductions, it's short, right? It's only going to give you five or six paragraphs. So if we, do, we were to put in a 500-word document, hold on just one second. If I take Steve's old document that we did not that long ago for the earlier event, I know that at some point it kept telling us it was too long. Yeah, there's only a certain number of characters you get. Let's try this. So I'm just going to cut and paste in a document. And knowing that I'm going to hit the limit, I can tell you how long it is. Oh, 
Oh, well, maybe not. But it's got a limit. So around the 500 word mark, it tells you you've got too many words in there. Do you want to be brief? So let's go back, click advanced again on the far right, and let's do a different one. And then I'm going to show you how to save it. So if you were to plug in a zip code again that was in your area, and instead search on keywords this time. So you mentioned bloggers. So let's search bloggers. We're going to look in the Boston area. You look in your area. So Mary, I just, can you actually add more than one keyword and more than one title in there just with commas? It makes it more specific, not less. So it won't give me bloggers and um, publicists. Hallelujah. I have your screen up now. Oh, hi. Well, there you are. God so Almighty. If I give it two keywords, it insists they right. both exist in the same profile, so it narrows Got the it. Search. Got it. So I understand. That makes sense. Right. But so below, you can always, for our point of view, you can always go to the more senior levels, for instance. That's right. So here we have 682 results of bloggers in the Boston area. Hmm. There's an interesting person, Steve. And we're going to sort again by relationship. So I guess right. I guess none of these people, Steve doesn't have any first relationship with bloggers, which is a loss. We need to fix yeah, well, that. You're gonna help, you'll, you'll help him fix that. I will, absolutely. But we could say, let's look at this again and let's see how we can get introduced. So she's a second level connection. They have shared people. So let's say get introduced and LinkedIn will populate it again with some choices. And that's Jay Voigt, consultant at people's work. Yeah, I know Jay. Jay's an old friend. Yeah. Hey. Cool. So were we to do this for real, we could say, personal note from Steve Lashansky, we could fill in the details, and here we go. This was what we used for the first event. But there it is. So we could have this campaign, and we've done this before, Steve and Stephanie and I, where we have a campaign where all we do is go in and who does he want to invite, who can connect him and send those out. And it was actually remarkable the level of response that we got, which was probably five times better than anything we ever did on email, even to people I knew. Well, here's the reason why. Because if Steve were to just reach out to Jessica House, right, and invite her, she has no reference point. Even if he made the most persuasive thing in the world, she's never even met him at a coffee. So if he goes through Jay, and Jay says, oh, yeah, Steve's the real deal. I mean, that, though, you know, those four words, Steve's the real deal, make it 50% more likely that she's going to at least read, if not attend an event. So it just brings intimacy right. and credentials into it, right? Right. So yeah. that advanced function for search is really huge. Let's back out for a quick second. Let's just see why using the groups to narrow the search is a win. And I know for Steve because I help pick them, right? If I look at his groups and we just scroll down, he's in all C-level groups, right? Really high, really professional. They all show on his profile, so it's also a branding win for him. But you know what I noticed when I looked at them just now? There are no Boston groups. So if I were to go up, I have room. He's got 46. I'm going to search. Now you see it says groups. I'm going to search Boston. Because I'm in New York, you're in the Valley, we could all use regional search and regional groups to support our work. So There's a 50 group limitation, right? 50. It's 50 groups. So let's see. Boston Recruiters. So I'm just looking at which ones. Boston Consulting Group. Well, that was a company. Greater Boston Networking. So. The plus is that a regional area has regionally based groups. The minus is you'll have to look through them to find the right ones. And are you better typically to get more targeted with the specific local groups of interest? Like if, like well, if Steve wants to really market to the Silicon Valley, should he find the Silicon Valley CIO group? Yes. That's exactly right. When you do that, and here's part of the reason why. I mean, they're on LinkedIn, so you want people active on LinkedIn if you're using their platform. So if I were to go and look at Boston Financial Professionals, 3,000 members, 
is this a good fit for Steve? So hey, that isn't a bad fit. I'm going to join the group. And it may say he needs to be approved. Oh, no, look, he's in already. So now when I go back to that advanced search, I'm going to go back to people. I'm going to hit advanced again. It's not that he would really be a financial professional, but would they be good people to have at his event? You bet. So sometimes before I do a search like this, I'll just go in and look at the groups. I'll see if there's a group where that population would be good for my event. All I'll do is choose zip code and the group. God, recruiters must love this tool. That they do. That's why LinkedIn is. Oh my is God. Yeah. So here we go. New talent management in Boston. And are there there was a nut we just here we go. Boston Financial Professionals. So let's hit search and all we're gonna get are results on those two groups. So this is a pretty good I mean, we're talking about financial analysts strategic innovators, chief executives at Rubicon. This is a good list. And we could actually save this list. We can hit Save Search and Search Name. So we're going to explain what this was, right? We're going to say Financial Boston Locals from Group Search. Uh, group. Okay? And it's going to send Steve an alert weekly. Now that's going to be annoying, but I'm going to leave it there for now. You'll have to call me Steve to turn it off. But now, when we go to Saved Searches, so I'm just going to go back here to Advanced, so I get a clean slate. I'm going to click slave, Saved Searches. That's the one hey, we that's just five times saved. Faster. And here they are. Look, you can even see the new people. We can see the new people in the search that he did last time. So had we, if we take this search, had he already invited all of these people, if you want to save, you can just invite the new people now. You can click View. And these are the new people who joined LinkedIn under these search criteria since the last time we did it. Isn't that crazy? It basically yeah. gathers your pro future prospects for you as they join. That's right. We, now we, have to, we do have to invite them one at a time, right, through our connections. Um, well, here's what I do. Assuming you have the right connections to begin with, whoever you are, at the moment it's you guys, I would open your connections. So here's what I did. I, could, I clicked Contacts and Connections. And once this populates, let's ask it again. Here we go. I can actually open this up based on location. So these are your connections. And I can say Greater New Boston Area and watch this. I can click 50 of them. Let's pretend I clicked 50. And I can send a message. And now it populates, well, sorry, I guess I didn't click as many as I thought. But I can click, you know, several dozen. Send a message. And it'll populate all of them, Steve. So I can put my subject. I can fill it in. I take this off so they don't see each other's names. And then I send the message. Uh, what do you do so they don't see each other's names? There's a box you click, send me okay. a copy, allow recipients. I make sure to unclick that. I don't want them to know I'm mass mailing. Sure. But we've done that for Mr. Lushansky before. Uh -huh. uh, you know what, let me go out and show you through my own because I just feel like confidentiality issues. So let me go into my box, which I'm not the least bit uncomfortable to show you. I don't have any secrets from Mitchell. You know, I just, you know, who knows what you've got in there. So. <laughs> well, you use it. I mean, if I were the only one using it. I have one secret from you, Steve, but I'll share it next time I see you in person. <laughs> what is this doing to me? Steph just said now she's curious. That's my evil plan. Why can I not get in here? All because I left my cop locks on. Sorry. Did you have, did you, did your walk away didn't have the whole W-A-Y in it? 
Well, that would explain it, sir. Yeah. I do that all the time. Oh, thank you. That's a relief. All right, so let's look at my set, and I'll show you. She's a heavy networker, too. Yeah, I've got 30,000, please. So I have Is a that client. The max? You can see all of these. So I have a client who has an event in May, on May 2nd. And I want to reach everybody in San Diego. So this is what we do. We go in and we reach 50 recipients. We mark in a notebook where we left off, and then we pick it up and send more. So this is happening today. My team is doing this. So they're logged in as me downstairs. I'm upstairs in the office. And they're going 50 people at a time, blasting. So were, were you the first one to max out LinkedIn? I don't know the answer to that. I can still add connections, but I'm really careful, because I know I'm going to hit this any second. So look, I've got 24,000 connections, right? So I've got 5,000 left. They stop you at 30. So 24,000 connections, if I open up locations and I choose greater Boston area, where is that? I just saw it. Well, let's go for greater New York area. I've got 1,735 people I can reach. That's nice if you've got an event. So we literally would click 50 at a time and you would invite all 1,700? I would. These are my first level connections. I would. If they're in the right area, and then I could even, I know some of these people, right? So I can open this up. I can send a message. So I've got I now haven't seen anybody out. using that for like an event notification yet. Is that just starting, or my, my LinkedIn friends are not as hip as you are? I was going to say, I, I really hate to be so unhumble about it. It's not starting. It's people don't know how to use the platform. That's why a social strategist is useful, at least for things but like I mean, this. But this just hasn't been done that much yet, is what you're saying, unless a few people out there like you are teaching it. Listen, even if you teach it, even if somebody understands it, it takes time. And people yeah. are busy and they're lazy. <laughs> so this is a really effective way to invite people to events, and I'll show you why. So let's go to my inbox. I did this. I was... Um, I spoke at an event, where is Chris? I think I deleted it, but let's find it. His name is Chris. I spoke at an event in San Francisco. Like the one I'm doing now, we had a very short leash to invite people. And Chris Cherick, sorry, different person. Where's the other Chris? Um, Chris Binkley is on my LinkedIn list. I don't know him, and I invited him to the event. And Chris wrote back to me, and he accepted, and he paid $197 to come to this mastermind that I taught in San Jose. So here's his response. Booked, looking forward to it, Mary Agnes. So we had a little back and forth. This is my note that I sent him, right? I literally sent that to everybody on LinkedIn in the San Francisco area, all thousand of them. And he wrote back and said, where is the event being held? I told him where. When is it? And he signed up and he came to my event. And then he paid now, I did this for a client, right? I didn't do this for me, Mitch. Yes, yeah, for Canings. I went out and taught this mastermind with the client. So Chris Pinkley came to the mastermind. He paid $197. And at that mastermind, he was upsold into a coaching program that's $997 a month for six months. So he was a $6,000 account for that client. That you didn't even really know. Right. I don't know Chris Pinkley before this. But he's on my LinkedIn list somehow. All I do is accept. I don't outbound invite at all. Yeah. So you can see I've got 1,500 pending invitations, right? But every time somebody invites me, I accept and I send a note. So I have some touch with Chris Pinkley before this whenever he invited me. And he's a sweetheart. He's a really good addition to their mastermind. There he is. Very cool. Very cool. So that's how the advanced search comes around, and that's how you really use your contacts. So for Steve, I would go in, I would look at locations, I would scroll down to greater Boston area, wherever it's hiding, and um, and then I would choose those people, and I would start inviting on his behalf. You know, my client Steve Blashansky, one of the best leaders I've ever met, certainly best training. You know, I really want everybody to come to this event, very affordable, and on and on and on, and I have a link. You can see how short my message was to Chris, though, right? That's something to remember. 
because the, yeah. long, the longer the message, the more you say, the less they listen. So I have a one paragraph with a link. Thanks for coming. And then I put my credentials at the bottom. So if you have something that's five paragraphs long, you get a lot less click through. Mm -hmm. Besides, there's a link. They can get all the details from the link. Ta-da! And at the link, we've got a video, because that converts really high, too. And then look, it rolls out, it rolls out, it rolls out. It's, you know, there's a lot more content there. Oh, wait a minute. I just want to tell you which one is me. Hold on. That one's me. <laughs> Behind the tree. Hey there. Hey, that's me. So, so back to LinkedIn. So I, there's a, a I wish I had known about your event in San Jose. I would have come down for it. I used to do a lot of networking down at the Capitol Club. That's a nice spot. Oh, well, yeah. I'm definitely going to be there. You should come. And I'm doing another mastermind in San Diego on the 17th or 18th. Oh, you're doing another one this month coming up in San Jose? I am, and I'm doing one in Denver on this weekend and everywhere. So it's oh, I'm sorry, I thought it was April like 19th. Are you doing another event in San Jose soon? San Diego is the 17th to 19th, and I think the next San Jose is part of the Thrive Workshop. So let me, I can actually answer that question. I think it's June 22nd. A client's gig, so it's a little expensive. It's not my event. It's the Thrive event, and it's I think it's six hundred dollars on the twenty second of June. Oh, who's the twenty eighth. Who's the Thrive group? Thrive. So it's Kelly Richards, and she's the one with the mastermind. That's her. Oh, sorry, I just took you to the back of her website, but I'll show you her Thrive event. I'm sorry, I'm not marketing her for you. I just wanted to show you what we do market and how it works. So there, I hate websites that do this. Okay, so here's her Thrive event. It's based on Alan Weiss's book. Uh huh. And it's June 28th, and somewhere in there, she asked me to do the social mastermind again because it's obviously like it's things people need to know. So there's Alan talking about Kelly. Anyway. And, so, and what oops. programs do you have to work with people like Steve or I? Um, I do this a lot. I do one-on-one -on -one training for very advanced people because LinkedIn is such a value. I'm going to take out the phone. LinkedIn is such a good platform for you guys. I mean, this is, to be blunt about it, I'm really humble, but this is where the money is. This is where the leaders are who engage yeah. on a whole different platform. So if you know how to locate them and use it for lead gen, it's, it's profound. It's a really good space. And even just to be in the groups. So look, even my groups, I don't use them well enough because I'm not interested in my own social presence, right? I only work by recommendation. But if I were to go into um, Blackhawk Partners, so Blackhawk Partners is run by Ziad Abdelmore. He's a billionaire, literally with a B. And this is his group. Now, it's a very small membership. And it's a profoundly powerful group of people. So if I were to go in here and I were to start having discussions or better yet, answering discussions. You think mm -hmm. I'd have a few billionaires as clients? Probably would. I can click here and look at who the members are of this group. Blackhawk Partners is a big deal. So I can scroll down here. Is that, that a real estate partnership? Or are they, no. Uh, in, no. They're, uh, private equity. Private equity. It's, it's private equity. So this is Ziad. This is his group. So that's Ziad Abdelnor, good friend, very wonderful person. And we can see who the members are. So these are members who've contributed something right now. So if I were to go this extra yard, if I were looking for clients, right, I could I could actually follow these clients, and I could see when they post things. So here, let's follow Todd Dean. Let's follow Ziad for sure. You know, let's follow Mike. You know, we'll follow these people who are active on the group, and then I'll get an update when they post something, not just to the group but anywhere. So if I scroll down now and I start looking at these players, George Jensen, huge player in the venture cap market. Uh, Kelly Richards, right? So that's how I got connected with these people. Leo Griffin, I mean, this is a great thing. You can learn so much about the members of the group because of the discussions that go on. This is sort of behind the curtain almost, right? So a lot of yeah. these groups are open, but a lot of them are not open. So you can turn in, so we can open this 
and we can hear this really intimate discussion that this billionaire has about, you know, life, money. So this is just a quick little conversation a few people had. But you could go to the more intricate conversations where I go, I could go to my groups on private equity and venture cap, and I've learned, well, I worked in that area for a while, but it's a huge way to l learn from the highest level of those of those verticals, right? Well, it's what they're, it's, it's knowing what your process and customers are saying and thinking. That's right. And what they're, and what they're interested in right now. Absolutely. So this is your there, listening it's, it's, here. Like you said, it's literally getting behind the curtain on people you don't really know, and That's you will know them in a way that when you do start a conversation with them, you have a lot of advantages. Right. So you, here, um, books and writers. So books and writers, I do a lot of service for the writing community because I am a writer. So let's go here. And I can, but it looks, so here's me, and here's my, I want to find my discussions. Here, discussions you've joined. And so this person had, I posted biggest time killers. I posted a class for these people. That's underneath groups, Mary Agnes? Yeah, underneath any group. So you can choose groups, and you can open your group. And you can see who the players are. So let's choose women in communications. That would be a good group for me to market Steve's event for him, right? So I can see who the members are, click through, and it will even tell me the current members who have done stuff in the group. So here they are. Marianne Russell, Bonnie Ross Parker. So I mean, these are great people. Another great thing to do is go find a leader that you love and see what groups they're in because they know what they're doing. They're only in groups that they want to give their time to. So let me go and search Kelly Richards. So Kelly Richards is, I have to be my clients, so I know the groups because I choose them, but it's a good example. So Kelly Richards worked for Apple, and she kind of stands on the line between tech and music. She launched music at Apple. I mean, that's huge. So where the hell are you, Kel? Um, oh, I'm in groups. See, that's an easy mistake to me. So I'm going to go to people. I'm going to search Kelly Richards. And then I'm going to go down to her profile. And I'm going to look at what groups she's in because it tells me a lot about her. And I can look at what conversations she's in. So way down at the bottom of her profile are her groups. Here we go. She's in Alley to the Valley. She's right near you, in fact, Mitch. So if I go into the Alley to the Valley group, and many, many, many groups now are open membership. You can join the group. Now, this one may say, oh, I've got too many groups. But I could go in, and I could look at her discussions in the group. Were I looking for her to be my client? This is a huge opportunity. Yeah, it's not even that big a group, 125 people. But Alley to the Valley, those are people that would be great to work with. Yeah, they're all people that are starting and growing and, and around the community of growing businesses in, that, uh, in the Silicon Alley. So let me pretend I'm Kelly for a minute, and I know she wouldn't mind. We're very, very close friends. I'm going to go into Alley to the Valley. I'm going to show you why it's a great group. if it lets me in. Okay, so let's go to her groups again for a minute. and Let's go Silicon Valley Capital Club. There you go. <laughs> so here's your club. This is just, you're in this club also, right? Yeah. The members in this club are extremely prestigious. We know that because there's a fee just to belong. Yep. So there's 489 members. Now, maybe you met the guy playing golf. But then you go in and you're like, hey, what was that guy all about with a funny name? Okay, here you are, AJ Rakhmakadan. And you can see what AJ does, but you can also scroll down and look at what other groups AJ's in, because that's going to say a lot about him, and you can eavesdrop on his conversations. I hate to say it that way, but were you that interested in working with him? Now, some of them are big groups, right, Forbes CMO. But you look for the smaller ones, and you watch the discussions. And it's a very, very interesting way to learn about the people you want to do business with. Let's use my friend Ziad Abdel Noor as an example. Ziad Abdel Noor, who is the head of Blackhawk Partners, we can go down, look at Ziad's groups, and we can go in and see if we wanted to do business with Ziad, what do we need to know? 
tons of information goes out on these LinkedIn profiles, and none of us use them well enough. The Billionaires and Millionaires Club. It is. It is. So here's Todd, that I followed him before, right? Hiring mistakes that can crush your culture. <laughs> So that's pretty much the overview, the three places worth being on on LinkedIn are the groups for what I just showed you, which is kind of a branding and discussion search behind the curtain, and to promote yourself that way as well. The advanced search, right? We talked about how to use contacts a little bit. Let's take two seconds. Oh, I have three minutes. And I just want to show you what a good profile looks like, and then I'm going to jump off because I have to be on another call. But Here's Steve Lashansky. His headline is not his title. When somebody searches, they don't care that he's CEO of. We want to know what he does. So that's his headline, and that's what yours should be, a headline, not a title. I didn't look at yours, so I don't know, but most people make that mistake. And then if we look at it from the front, he's got videos. It is very compelling. If you click see more, He's got great videos. He's got more that we're loading in now, which even have a different look and feel to them. He's got a great bio here. All of his stuff, his publications, the organizations he's in, his awards, projects he's been on that have a great um, impact, right? So this is what your LinkedIn profile should look like. I haven't looked at yours, but there's Probably, if you've got half of that, you're in the leading. You know? Yeah, I don't. Right. I mean, most people don't. But if you load in PowerPoints and videos, mm -hmm. your larger projects that you you know, have a shareholder stake in, organizations, mm -hmm. awards, I mean, these projects are key. I mean, these, this is where you fulfill the rest of your profile, right? Sure. I mean, well, for me, one of the things that's going to be really important is I'm going to be reaching out to, you know, with both our sleep and our stress release programs, I want to get them into the wellness directors at Fortune 1000 companies. And so that's going to be one of my key target groups, as well as sort of the decision makers for wellness benefits at certain payers, say, or right. also the companies that are the benefits administrators that decide what benefits to recommend to their corporate clients. Those are three B2B That's corporate right. groups that I'm going to be very interested in trying to call out uh, the right people for. So I could so, definitely get excited about working with you to help me with that. So think about, well, that's very nice of you. <laughs> you will have to give me a little lead time. I have a waiting list, not to be grandiose, but definitely just let, it, it's, yeah, it's been a really crazy time, a wonderful time. I hired a staff and, you know, shifted from solopreneur to entrepreneur at the speed of light and the, the total loss to all my clients in the last four weeks as I figured that crap out. But um, it's been a good change, and, you know, to be able to support Steve's people and to, you know, even with Steve and Steph, to go over this yet again and to show another layer of things is really valuable, I think. Well, more automated training and more uh, leveraging up your one-to-one to one-to-many, one doing some, considering maybe doing some group coaching is a nice way to leverage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ask, I've been trying to build it for seven years. I teach a class tomorrow night. I'll send you an invite. You're welcome to come. Excellent. It's basic Facebook basics, so it's a good class to take. If you think it's not your space, you learn why it is, you know. It all Steve, is. You have, to, you have to invest in social media and marketing. Well, the problem now is that Google changed its algorithm, so you can no longer remain aloof or you're not even searchable. The algorithm yeah. on Google runs on social grid first. So the Penguin algorithm, which is what answers a search request, now loads social grid before anything else you've done. So if you're not on the grid, you're wiped out. If you're not on the grid, you don't look relevant. That's what happens. You don't look relevant to Google anymore. Or, or to anyone searching for you. Would you guys mind if I jumped off? I, this is somebody else's platform, no, so right. I want to be respectful. Oh, not at I, all. He has something yep. scheduled for now, if I read it correctly. And um, we'll see you and Steph. I'll circle back with you later today. And very yeah. nice to meet you. I really appreciate uh, getting a chance to uh, 
learn more about this, and uh, and uh, I do want to get on your your backlog list. So get <laughs> me in. All right. Well, no worries. We'll talk about that. In the meantime, I'm a friend and a resource for you. Excellent. Thank you so much. All right, loves. Have a great day, everybody. We'll talk soon. All right. Bye. Bye, honey. Okay.